Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm attorney Gloria Allred, and with me is Sherry Drerup, and uh, I'll be making a statement, then Sherry will be making a statement. And also behind us is my law partner, Dolores Leal. Today I'm here with our client, Sherry Drerup, an experienced female pilot who has been flying for 14 years and who has logged approximately 4,000 flight hours as a pilot in a cockpit. Despite her background, training, and experience, however, Sherry has become a victim of sex discrimination and a double standard for female versus male pilots in her employment. That is why she has filed a lawsuit today and Ohio attorney Lauren Knoll and my law firm represent her in this lawsuit. My law firm is seeking to be admitted as co-counsel. Sherry applied to be a pilot with NetJets Aviation in July of 2015. NetJets extended an offer of employment to her and based on that offer, she resigned from her employment with Mark Hankins Ministries. According to her lawsuit, Sherry successfully completed the in-dock portion of her training on the Phenom aircraft, and she received her gold medal, NetJet's wings for her uniform jacket. An issue arose, however, when she attended Phenom training at flight safety. She passed the oral exam but faced a problem with the simulator because her legs were too short to push the rudder pedal to the floor. Sherry had been type rated to fly five other jets, and she had never encountered this problem in flying other aircraft. Her instructor told her that her legs were simply too short for the phenom, and he wrote in her training record that her stature precluded her from attaining sufficient control authority. A representative of NetJets told her to get a booster seat or some tall shoes. Sherry did purchase shoes with thicker soles, and she purchased back pads to move her close to the rudder pedals, but they did not help. Sherry was told that if she was too short to fly the Phenom, then she would be too short to fly any of NetJet's other aircraft. Sherry told the representative that she had a type rating in at least two of NetJet's current fleet, so she was not too short to fly their other planes. Despite this knowledge, NetJets terminated Sherry. Prior to her termination, NetJets reassigned three male employees who were too tall to fly the Phenom, and they reassigned them to fly other jets in their fleet. Sherry was type rated to fly five other jets, including the Encore Plus jet but she was not reassigned. She was terminated. Why was a male pilot offered that opportunity, but Sherry was denied it? In my opinion, this constitutes sex discrimination and is clearly a double standard for male and female pilots. This is just one of a number of examples of sex discrimination in employment to which Sherry was subjected at NetJets. When Sherry was interviewed for this job, she had asked NetJets how many pilots they employed and how many of those pilots were women. She was told that they had 2,700 pilots and 71 were women. This means that only approximately 0.026% were women. According to the Center for Pilot Aviation, women are approximately 4% of all pilots in the United States. So NetJets was below the national average in their employment of female pilots. It's time to end the discrimination against female pilots and the double standard in the treatment of men and women, which often results in a denial of important employment opportunities to female pilots solely on account of their gender. We look forward to supporting and fighting for Sherry as she continues her battle to end sex discrimination and afford equal employment opportunity for women pilots. And now I present Sherry.
Wait, just one second. We'll move over a little bit. Okay. To the mics. Oh, okay. okay. Good afternoon. My name is Sherry Drewup. I've been a professional pilot, corporate pilot, for 14 years and have accumulated over 4,000 flight hours and five jet type ratings. It was always a goal of mine to fly for net jets. They had a reputation for professionalism, well-maintained beautiful aircraft, and most importantly, their declared emphasis on safety. I was a competitive candidate. When I applied for a position with NetJets, I let them know that I was working on my Master's of Science degree in aeronautics with a spe specialization in safety from Embry-Riddle University. Safety is everything to me and is why I wanted to be a part of their team. I applied to NetJets in 2015, was interviewed and offered a position into their indoctrination class starting December of 2016. All pilots hired into my class were measured before being hired to be sure that we would fit in all of their aircraft. There were 13 pilots in my class, including myself. On February 6 of 2017, I started aircraft specific training for NetJets at Flight Safety International. My simulator partner, a NetJets captain, and I completed aircraft specific systems and avionics training and moved on to the simulator portion of the training. It was during the simulator sessions that I was having trouble controlling the aircraft during full power single engine maneuvers go arounds. My instructor noticed this over a period of days and he stopped the simulator during one session and declared, Sherry, the reason you're struggling with these procedures, you're just too short for this airplane. My instructor documented in my training records and I quote, Sherry's stature precludes sufficient control authority, which simply means my legs were not long enough to fully depress the rudder pedals during a single engine go around. I was surprised as I've never been too short to perform these procedures on any of the other five jets that I have type ratings in. Flight safety then informed NetJets of this issue. I was told by NetJets, go buy a booster seat, wear platform shoes, just make it work. We hired you to fly this phenom and you need to figure it out. I stated that I was concerned about being pilot in command in an aircraft that in case of an engine failure at full power, I would be too short to control. I thought to myself, did NetJets really expect me to carry around a booster seat and wear platform shoes to go to work every day? Is this really safe? I asked if I would just be safer for them to transfer me to another aircraft in their fleet. I was told at that time that if I was too short to fly the Phenom, I would be too short to fly any of their aircraft. This was absolutely an untrue statement since I was already type rated and trained to fly their Encore Plus in their fleet. Moreover, I was aware that three men in my indoctrination class were deemed by NetJets to be too tall for the Phenom cockpit and they were assigned to other aircraft. I was notified the next day that NetJets made their decision to terminate my employment instead of transferring me to another aircraft in their fleet that I was qualified to fly. NetJets discriminated against me when they made the decision to terminate me because I was too short to fly as pilot in command in the Phenom. Stature was an issue for the three male pilots who were too tall for the Phenom, and yet they were transferred to another suitable aircraft. I was too short to fly the Phenom and was not afforded the same options even though statue was the issue for all of us. As a professional pilot, NetJet's decision to terminate my employment has done irreparable damage to me and my flight career. Thank you. And before we take some questions, uh, we, this is a copy of the lawsuit that was filed this morning uh, on behalf of Sherry. And in addition, I guess we can we can stand up. Um, this is let me stand up. So right here. So this is a copy of a photo of Sherry in the Phenom. Okay, that's the copy of the photo. And 
In addition, we have a copy of a letter uh, from the Director of Flight Operations at Netflix. NetJets. Excuse me. Yes. NetJets. Okay. No. I like Netflix. All right. Uh, okay. It says, Sherry, congratulations on beginning your career with NetJets Aviation, Inc. Please accept these pilot wings. We trust that you will always provide our owners with a safe, superior air transportation experience at NetJets, and we are happy to have you as part of the team. Do you have the wings on? No, I don't. Okay, all right, that's okay. <laughs> all right, so she did get those. All right, so how tall are you? Five two. All right. You can take a seat. <laughs> Sherry, I'm sorry you're going through this. Thank you. Move I over to the mics a little bit oh. more, please. Sorry. Okay. My first question is, so it looks like you had about a year before they were training you on a different aircraft. So you, were you successfully <coughs> flying their other aircraft prior to the training for the Phenom? Is that correct? No, the training for the Phenom was my initial hire, <laughs> initial aircraft. So you never got a chance to fly? Never. Ms. Brewer, how many, how many other aircraft in their fleet would you have been Qualified At the right. time, there were two. There were two. The Hawker and the Citation Cessna Encore Plus. And nope. you're trained on those. You have flight hours in those. You're fine with those. I was type rated in those aircraft. And so, it translated, that means you were qualified. <laughs> yes. And the FAA. They would have retrained me. You know, we would have gone through the training again to their standards. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. I, I could fly them. Did you ever receive an answer from NextGen about why they didn't just put you into one of those? No, sir. Did you ask? I didn't get an answer. Was there any indication that NetJets was going to phase out those aircraft as part of their fleets, leaving the Phenom as the only aircraft really that they were going to be using? Or well, still uh, using the Hawker and the others? Well, uh, there was at least another person in my class that was put in the Encore Plus, so they were so they're hiring not, into they're not them. phasing out the aircraft that you are type rated and qualified to fly. I'm not you were sure never what told they did you, after you, yeah, I left. you were never told that, right? I'm not sure what they did after I left. It's you were never years. told that, is no. that correct? No. Okay. Help, me, help us understand what you've been through since then. You know, why has this, you know, hindered you from finding other employment? How has it been for you, you know, mentally? Well, it's difficult, you know, when you get terminated from a position that's been really your dream job and you go there and you're very qualified and you're ready to do a great job for them. You have million, a lot of letters of recommendation and when, you're, when it's determined by your instructor that you're too short to physically handle the airplane during single engine maneuvers, it's difficult. You know, you go off to your dream job and you come home terminated. It was very difficult. This was during the point you were in the simulator. How about actually flying the aircraft? Never got to the aircraft. Doesn't that seem to be, a, pardon me, a little bit BS because God knows simulators are one thing. A real thing, the real world is something else. You as a pilot know the difference between how a simulator works and how a pilot functions in a real aircraft. Do you think if you had a chance to fly the aircraft, you could show them that in essence you're correct in saying that you're capable of flying it and the simulator basically should go fly a kite? No, sir. I, I was too short to fly the airplane, the simulator. I was too short to reach the rudder pedals to full deflection. There was no doubt. But of course, our, our point was that the men who were too tall. tall to fly the Phenom were reassigned to be able to fly other aircraft. She was not afforded that opportunity to fly other aircraft in NetJet's fleet, which she was qualified, type rated is what it's called to fly. Gloria, why would the company go through the trouble and the expense of training her and getting her that far if they did not intend to put her in an airplane? Would well, that's, that's, a that's a good question and only they can answer that. No, no theories? Uh, I, I'd like, if I have a theory, I'd like to support it with facts and uh, I, I don't have those facts of why they did not afford her equal opportunity to fly another aircraft that she was qualified to fly and yet afforded it to men who were too tall. For the Phenom, it, it, you know, they, they have a lot of explaining to do. 
Has your stature, Ms. Drew, uh, ever been a problem for flying any other aircraft? No, 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 sir. And that is why she is type rated to I've fly got, five know, other In the other five jet type jets. ratings, we all have to perform the same maneuvers, single engine maneuvers, high power, single engine. You all have to be able to put in a lot of rudder, and I've never had an issue in any of the other five jets. So the only difference was that, that pedal being far away? Just, you had to push it deep down into the nose of the airplane. In other words? My leg, like the instructor said, it's like, Sherry, you're just too short for this airplane. In other words, putting pedal to the metal? <laughs> just too short. <laughs> yes. Can you talk about how that made you feel when you pretty much found out that there is this it was, it Mike. was, I'm sorry, okay, go ahead. it was terrible because, you know, I went there to, like I said, to have my dream job. I went to a meeting with NetJets after they told me to get a booster seat, you know, and I expressed I was concerned, a safety issue, if I'm too short to fly the airplane, and um, went to a meeting the next day expecting to be transferred to another airframe. And they handed me a termination letter, took my badge, took my credit card, took my iPad, took my cell phone, and treated me like a criminal, you know? And so it was terrible. So I go home a failure, basically, in my mind, and I just can't believe it. And I had such a problem, you know, from the moment that they determined I was too short to fly this airplane, they should have helped me. They should have said, you know what, we've got other aircraft in the fleet, you're a good pilot, let's put you in another airplane. But they didn't. I so yes, this it's, is, it's this is taking us all along. Yes. Talk to me about the emotional toll that it's taken. I vowed that I wouldn't cry today. <laughs> Go ahead and but it's do really whatever you, you know, feel. pictures showing up for your job that you really thought you'd have for the rest of your life and being treated like you don't matter and just kinda tossed to the curb. And the Phenom cockpit is a tight cockpit. And when NetJets purchased these phenoms from the manufacturer, they asked that these cockpits be modified and made them a little bit tighter, I believe to put a Keurig coffee maker behind the right seat pilot. So the dimensions of how the seats and the, everything worked was adjusted by NetJets. That's the reason they had us all measured before we were hired to be sure that we fit, they called it, into all their aircraft. The tall guys had problems because they couldn't scoot their seat back much. They were tight. Some guys were getting their feet caught under the rudders. So seriously, so we had to measure ourselves from like the hip to the knee, the knee to the floor, all kind of measurements before they would say, you're hired. I was short and everybody assumed, well, you're not going to have a fit problem because you're tiny. But I was the first person that had a fit problem because I was too short. And so the three guys that they determined were too tall, they said, okay, we're gonna give you another airframe. For me, they sent me to Phenom training. They just weren't happy to find out that I was too short, you know, a good ways through the training. But it wasn't my fault. I can't fix that. This reminds me of decades ago. I think it was in the 70s when I was in Los Angeles and starting to do sex discrimination cases. And women had a problem getting hired by the LAPD because they weren't meeting the height standard. And I went and had a meeting with then police chief, LA police chief, Daryl Gates. And I had a client that was not meeting the height standard. She did in some measurements and other times she was not meeting the height standard. And I said, chief, this is discriminating against women and also certain minority groups who cannot meet the standard. It's also not job related and you need to change that standard because it's denying equal employment opportunity. And he said, Gloria, why don't you just stretch your client? No. And I said, Chief, putting women on the rack and stretching them went out in the Middle Ages, and that is not an acceptable solution. Wow. Ultimately, they changed the height standard, and women could do the job, are doing the job, are doing it successfully, but that was one of the barriers then. Wow. Now, here is Sherry, who is not arguing about a height standard. Her main concern, as always in her profession, is safety of the aircraft and those on it. And she is qualified to fly other 
aircraft in that fleet. Why is she denied the opportunity to do it when men are afforded that opportunity? There are so few women pilots overall working for airlines in this country, and they are qualified. And it's time to let them do the job that they're qualified to do, especially where pilots like Sherry are concerned with safety. That's their number one concern. And that should be the number one concern of any owner of any airline, any fleet. And there should be no shortcuts. Agreed. So it's time to make a stand. Sherry's making the stand. She's a pioneer in this, and she deserves thanks of every woman who wants to be a pilot or is a pilot, and also short women like me. That's uh, right. <laughs> and Dolores. Right. Okay. That's right. All right. Any other questions? For this case, yes. What is it about NetJets that you found so appealing that you, you know, wanted to, to work there? Well, I live in a small town in Louisiana. Most jobs you have to move to go to work. You could live anywhere in the country and commute. You fly seven days on call, work, and then you're home seven days. The schedule was good. They have beautiful aircraft, professional company. And they fly all over the country or all yes. out of Ohio or? No, all over the country. Yes. What are you asking for in lawsuit? Damages, um, you know, in an amount to be proven at trial. So she's entitled to that under the Federal Civil Rights Act if as and when she is able to prove the case. And we believe that she is going to be able to prove her case and um, she suffered you know, an adverse action, that is termination of her employment. Um, and therefore, we are asking for judgment in her favor for pain and suffering, for economic damages, um, and, and, and other relief to which she may be entitled. This is filed in federal court in the Southern District of Ohio, the Eastern Division. If NetJets had a sudden moment of clarity, NetJets. pardon me, NetJets had a moment of clarity, you can pull their head out of the said, we made a mistake, we'll hire you back, we'll let you work on these aircraft. It's not that you would, would, would that be satisfactory, at least partially satisfactory, in settling this matter in your mind? Or is it just they've crossed the line and I'm sorry, you're not going back? But right now, that's a hypothetical, so we'll have to see. You've been a pilot for 14 years, you said? Yes. Is this the first time you feel like you've been discriminated against for being a woman, or do you think being a, a female pilot is, is hard? It's hard. It's hard. And uh, I think a lot of industries are male-dominated, as we all know. Pilots is very much male-dominated, but I've always enjoyed working with the guys, you know. I've never flown with another woman. I've always been crewed with another man. And I've always done f a fine job and worked out fine. So, you know, it's a tough job. but. This was to the extreme measure. This was not something that I could just walk away and say, okay, I'm going to let you terminate me and ruin my flight career. I'm, you know, this, this was an extreme case. I needed to speak up. What has it done to your career? Have you been able to apply to other places? I have. It's a small world. Yes, it's a very small world, and it's a very small community of aviators. There are not many. I've applied um, to a couple of other corporate charter operators, and I have been told in so many words that because NetJets terminated me, they would not be interested in me. Yes. So, Absolutely. So you haven't worked since? Oh, yes, I have. I've been a contract pilot, which means I am a self-employed contract pilot. I fly for people, and I did have another position with another company for a year as a floater pilot to fill in. So yes, I'm, I'm still flying. I love to fly. I'm going to fly. How many flight hours do you have? A little over 4,000. Okay. So plenty. 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 Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you so much for coming. Oh.